five years. Now, I don't necessarily believe that's true, but it, what it goes to show is the extent to which all of us tend to really believe that AI is going to disrupt and transform how our organizations operate, how we do business, how we ourselves work. But there is one thing that's likely not to change, talent being a critical challenge for any executive leader. I like to joke that any marketing collateral or research note that cites how important talent is for a CEO, when you update it, all you have to do is pick a number between one to five and change the year. And you'll likely be right because talent is the challenge cited in the top five for years and years and years, and we think it will be as we go forward. But as we look at talent and the challenge it's going to bring for executive leaders, for CEOs, for ourselves going forward, we're facing a great degree of uncertainty, a great degree of change in many other areas, not just AI, our best answer to all of this is autonomy. Giving people more autonomy, giving teams more autonomy, giving machines more autonomy. And you may wonder, can technology really lead to greater autonomy? How I work doesn't actually just control the way I do things, restrain me more, give me less choice, or is it giving me more autonomy to do more? And this is a big part of our next wave of technology-enabled business value innovation, autonomous business. You may have heard us talk about autonomous business in other sessions or in other research that we have published. This next wave where our feet are firmly planted in the first steps of this AI-enabled transformation, going beyond and building on what we learned in e-business and in digital business transformation. In this AI-powered automation and autonomous business, we talk about machine customers being in the center. And what we're focusing on today is around augmented leaders and executives, change themselves in the professions and how they work by how the organization is operating. All of these pieces really coming together in autonomous business. Another way to look at this is that we have applied AI as the foundation for yet another wave of business transformation that's going to impact and augment our workers and our leaders, management, and the organization overall. I want to talk a little bit, though, about what it means to move from automation to augmentation and autonomy especially when we talk about the machine side of the equation, so what the tools are doing. We tend to turn back to automation because that's what we know. We want predictability, we want consistency, we want tools that enable things to do things as expected. But we're aiming towards augmentation and autonomy with all of the investments we're making in everyday AI and game-changing AI to come, where we're facing complexity in the decisions to be made, using AI to support better information retrieval, keeping human in the loop, but it's probability-driven. And when you get to autonomy within machines, there's complexity in continuous learning so that it can also address the unexpected so that these capabilities are context and probability and observation driven and even goal oriented. That's what we talk about when we say how machines go from automation into augmentation and autonomy. And when we bring that on the human side and on the machine side, we get transformation for individual professionals and leaders, for management decision making and for enterprise productivity. So I said that talent is your consistent challenge. We're gonna go into each of these areas and talk about the key challenges, how we're using AI to address them, and how that's going to then change how we manage things, how we ourselves work as executive leaders. So for individual professional and leaders, the promise of AI is to reduce the time it takes to get up to speed, reduce time to competency, or reduce time to proficiency. 
I got to participate or was part of a Maverick project. It's a part of our research where we get to test new ideas. And this was back in 2018. We were writing how AI is gonna make us dumber unless we teach it to teach us back. It's taking away all the simple drudgery kind of tasks where we learn kind of how things work in a low risk environment and we leap into the high complexity tasks and need to be able to respond effectively in these more complex areas. Things that we are seeing as the talent challenge faced in say back office of insurance claims processing, financial services, or in the customer contact center around increased work complexity and labor costs because AI has taken away so many of those small tasks and as new tasks arrive, they have to be able to get up to speed quickly and address these things that happen less frequently and are more complex. So you turn to AI to help them. So we turn to AI essentially to be able to address this talent challenge, decrease the time to competency and increase people's sense of mastery, competence and impact to the work they do. Confidence that when they take on those more complex tasks, they're able to do it well and, and prove themselves as an individual professional. And we already see this emerging with the augmented connected workforce. If you didn't see our top strategic tech trend session, we do speak about it there and write about the augmented connected workforce, where you have the individual in their digital and physical work context, they have decisions they need to make, and we are orchestrating all of the technology, but also all of the support from knowledge, from how roles are designed and from all of the skills development capabilities we put in place to support people to take on that more complex work despite not having gone through the more simple tasks. An example from Merck where they were using augmented reality to do this, working with teams in their smart manufacturing facilities to drive that time to competency. And that's what they achieved. Two weeks time saving for training and time to proficiency. So this is today's work that organizations are already embarking upon as they invest in AI for workers granted in more routine work but we can see this extending with emerging capabilities that we're starting to experiment with, that we want to be implementing in the next few years that are part of the next wave of everyday AI. Things like augments. Augments where we enable people in the organization to get these or even build their own micro apps that are highly contextual and provide assistance and a performance boost. Think of a marketing team member or a sales team member prepare, preparing correspondence and needing a reminder of what the updated information about the product is or needing an update on a certain language that has changed and that augment coming in and giving advice in context for that person um, putting together that new correspondence. That is one example of an augment in that context. There could be so many more changing how people get the skills and the knowledge to do their work. Or the virtual coach, where we're giving this for the manager, the team leader, who needs to prepare really, really tough conversations. How do you prepare really tough feedback conversations with team members today? Do you? Maybe by yourself, muttering to yourself uh, as you're taking a walk to kind of think through how you want to address the tough conversation. Maybe you have an HR partner who says, I'll sit down with you and we can practice. But what if you had a tool that you could practice where it would respond back in a predictable way that probably the person who's not very happy about receiving the feedback would respond and you can kind of react to that and practice with a more realistic set of responses. Emerging sets of technologies that are coming into the market today are they perfect? Of course not. But are the investments there and is there actually products being sold? Yes. So wait for more support to managers in terms of those conversations. 
So when we think about going towards greater degree of augmentation, but also autonomy for individual professionals and leaders, the talent challenge, that existing talent challenge we already had, and that's going to continue on and on and on, is that complexity of work and high performance expectations. I've had those conversations this week where when they introduce AI, it mostly means people need to work faster. The expectation is they can deliver things so much more quickly if they're getting support to generate content or something like that. The goal is to improve individual performance through autonomy, mastery, and competency. You're trying to drive down time to competency through the investment in AI and other types of technologies like the augmented connected workforce technologies, micro app augments, or a virtual coach, conversational simulation. All of this will change how your leaders, how you think about your own skills development, your leader's skills development, others' capability development, performance, etc. And that's where that transformation comes in, based on what we've already started. Similar with decision making, which is the second element where AI comes in. And that promise of AI is better just-in-time decisions, increased speed in decision-making, and of course, off offloading that cognitive load. I would guess that everybody in this room has heard this message many, many times over many years, this promise that would come. I know I started my career at Business Objects decades ago. I won't say how many. But I still remember the ad, make everybody a CEO of their organization because they get data and decision support. And we know what kind of technology we had in place with desktop business objects reports to support people. So this promise has been long standing. What's changing is the complexity. Most people feel that their decisions are more and more complex. I would guess many of you feel the decisions you have to make on a day-to-day -day basis are more complex because too many people are involved, because there's unclear decision authority. There's an inability to collaborate across silos or disagreement on objectives. And maybe for yourself, if you're, if you're managing directly a team or the people you manage who directly manage teams, they're facing those same complexity, goal conflict, how much is projects and how much is people management, most of them feeling that they're overburdened, high degree of stress and fatigue. One, almost one in two, or actually one in two employees are confident that their managers are able to lead their teams forward. Decision making and autonomy in decision making. So what you're trying to address here is decrease that sense of information overload, that sense of not feeling confident in where you're going and what you're doing, and increase decision autonomy and confidence. Your tools are different than desktop, desky of old business objects, of those who might remember those tools. And the techniques, but the techniques remain somewhat similar. We go from focusing on workflows to focusing on decisions. You may be familiar with some of our research around decision intelligence. One highly simplified way of it, thinking about it, is that you design for the decision instead of designing for a task or a workflow. Simple example, every single one of you probably have to complete a compliance training every year, and you get the email reminder saying you have to complete a compliance training. And then you get the reminder and you have to remember if you actually completed it or not. If you think about it, the only decision you have to make is not if you're doing it, it's when. But none of the tools actually support you in deciding when am I going to do my compliance training. So it's orienting instead of giving you a list of tasks, orienting to the decision to be made and how to enable it. And there are so many tools from these very simple decisions to much more complex ones that can be used to really support and enable greater decision making, including newer ones that are emerging like composite AI platforms, greater natural language platforms, etc. But the foundation is designing for decision rather than task or workflow. And that happens everywhere, even in the board. 
If you think about board level decision making, there's a lot of routine decisions and information that needs to be evaluated and needs to be gone through. How much of that could be supported through some degree of automation or giving more autonomy in reviewing some of those insights and that in information? So as we use decision intelligence to increase the autonomy of people, to support decisions in all types of contexts with varying degree of automation or just augmentation or a basic support like an alert, we change how people make decisions. And we can see that going further with emerging capabilities that we're starting to invest in, that we're starting to look into. Like the idea of a cobot. So take somebody who works in recruiting, a recruiter. They have many different tasks that they do on any given day. They work across many systems, but they're, a large, they're often a large pool of recruiting, especially if you're in a recruiting firm or if you have a large enough team that you have some corporate recruiters. You can imagine with the capabilities that are emerging today that it would be interesting to start to build role-specific cobots. I will say I see this mostly in research-oriented conversations rather than live products, but it's easy to extrapolate to a cobot that's helping somebody navigate the myriad tasks that they need to do, recognize the context, what it is they need to focus on, and provide, hopefully, useful support. It's bringing Clippy to life, but in a completely new way, and hopefully much better and useful way so we don't just push it away every time working across applications. Another space that we can imagine is the maximizer. Maximizers can be very, very useful because within a given context, they are able to detect what the optimum would be right here, right now. And I know this very well because I live with a maximizer. It's my husband. My husband likes to detect and understand what is the optimum way to use our new solar panels that we had implemented this year. And I've come to learn that depending on the day, how much sun there is, how many things need to get done, it's gonna be a different order for running the dishwasher or cooking or laundry or what have you because the optimum changes on any given day. I can't myself just say, oh, there's a rule. We always do it in this order. It's this time, this thing. No, the optimum changes every time because that's how his brain works. That's how his mind works. He's gonna say the optimum today based on all of these different criteria and which one's gonna be given more importance because of our context, that's what's gonna make the decision that we're gonna best achieve our goal. And we can see more investments, especially in agent-based AI, where you're trying to build that capability out to be able to detect the optimum in a given context and apply it. So you're replicating decision patterns. You're setting a goal, but that goal can change slightly or the criteria can change slightly depending on the context. You're using things like simulations and scenarios to do so. Imagine having that at work when you're facing all of those really, really tough decisions. I have it at home. Sometimes I would like that at work as well, helping think through all those options. So in this space, your talent challenge is that complexity of decision making and the complexity of people, management, and leadership. Your goal is to improve leadership edge through structured autonomy. You don't want people going every which way, you need some direction, you need some guidance, but you want better decision making and people management. You want people to feel more confident, and so you can tap into decision intelligence capabilities and emerging things like cobots or tools that can act as maximizers. And so as we step forward into these new capabilities and look forward into these new capabilities that will emerge that we may invest in as game-changing capabilities in our organizations, just think about how it's changing decision authority and speed, and even expectations of how fast you can realistically take a decision. And that brings us to our third area, productivity. 
Productivity is the promise of this wave of hype around AI. So many headlines, so many studies promoting great productivity improvements through the use of generative AI, through the starting investments in new capabilities that have emerged. We will publish very soon a case study showing that sometimes these statements are a little bit overstated. A team of developers only really gained 70 minutes a week in productivity by using some of the newer capabilities. So they can be overstated, but even if they are, we're going to need to be able to prove it out. We're going to have CEOs and boards saying, where's the productivity when we've made such a big investment in these AI capabilities that are promising it and the vendors that are promising it. One challenge that you will all face as you look at what productivity is realistic in the deployment of all this technology I'm going to be investing in in the years to come to keep pace through everyday AI and maybe try to change the game a bit, is that we'll be measuring productivity in the old-fashioned way. How many widgets do people complete in a given set of time? Especially when we're thinking about worker and employee productivity. But when you're aiming for autonomy, you can't use automation rules for measuring productivity. So when you aim for autonomy, you actually need to be thinking about productivity at the individual level, the team level, and the enterprise level, and be thinking about all of that source of friction that can impede productivity. Digital friction, certainly, but also work friction and organizational level friction. How do you detect that and remove it? So in this talent challenge or organization challenge, we're trying to remove and decrease the level of frustration and friction about the work that we're doing and increase that sense of organizational effectiveness. And if we can't get a me better measure for productivity, at least perception of productivity. We already have some tools to detect and then people to act usually to remove friction. It could be things like work style analytics, digital experience monitoring that detects and can automatically remove friction, but digital twins of an organization that looks at the flow of work and operations and how the organization itself is working to be able to identify areas of improvement and improve and remove friction. And we could think of it at the employee level with a digital twin of an employee which we spoke about earlier this week. An emerging capability and way of thinking about this will be generative AI and extending planning and analysis. And I'm hesitating here because there can be a gap between the promise of generative AI to help detect and, and show where there can be conflict between all of these different plans which actually makes the organization operate less effectively. This is friction through how you set goals and budgets and plans. Those of you who are deep into the technical pieces know that generative AI does not work very well with tabular data and planning is tabular data. But there are startups already looking at how they can use tabular data as input and then the transformer models to generate text as output to help support analysis and evaluation and detection or proposing different ways of looking at how these different plans can intersect or conflict. There you're removing organizational friction. So it's not just for individuals, it's again at that enterprise level. And think about emerging autonomous logistics where you're tapping into generative AI capabilities, things like enterprise nervous systems, where you're looking at capabilities and technology that can be adaptable, that can detect when something has gone wrong in the, in the um, chain, uh, the supply chain or the chain of activities that needs to happen in that logistical chain, and detect and be that maximizer that I spoke about, detecting the optimum in that particular context to be able to best achieve the end goal of delivery on time of the most number of things. 
And so that goal-oriented optimization gets in place and could automatically generate planning. Is this readily available off the shelf today? No. Is it being worked on by organizations and those who are innovating heavily and investing heavily in generative AI and broader AI capabilities? Yes. So that's why we say as we face this ongoing talent challenge of friction hindering effectiveness, of friction being the cause of lack of productivity or problems with productivity, we aim to use AI in its many forms to improve productivity and remove that unwanted fiction. We move from automation orientation, thinking about how to increase the number of things that somebody can produce in a given time. That's not autonomy. We focus on removing friction and enabling autonomy. And that could be through things like generative AI for planning, once that really emerges, a digital twin of an organization, or simulation capabilities, or things that you start to build because you know your operations and how these techniques could really help drive better effectiveness. From a management perspective, I know this is more abstract, and you might have been thinking just about the person as a leader, but that leader is managing operations. And as their operations transform and things are done more autonomously in different parts of their operations, so do their responsibilities and what they need to be watching over. So as you aim tomorrow to increase autonomy through AI, based on your existing investment in AI and your AI investment plans, you're going to be aiming for getting tomorrow's skills more quickly by driving down time to competency at the individual level, whether they be individual workers in the contact center or the executive in the C-suite. You're going to be focused on improving management decision making, increasing autonomy so that people and things can adapt to the unexpected through better and more effective and distributed decisions. And on the productivity front, you're going to move from thinking about automation and number of widgets per time to removing friction and enabling autonomy of individuals <coughs> and teams and removing friction at the organization level so that that input to output ratio that we talk about in productivity can improve. And you can go to the board and the CEO and say, yes, our AI investments are helping us from a productivity perspective. So as you implement AI, as you focus on autonomy to address these challenges that never go away, that will continue to stay, but we continue to look for new tools and new capabilities to address them, you will actually find that your own role and responsibilities are also transformed. So I invite you as you take this long week away and the additional sessions maybe you attend through today, talking about AI, thinking about AI, what does it mean for us in our organizations? What does it mean from a productivity angle? What does it mean for me, myself, as an executive leader? Focus on autonomy for your people. Focus on autonomy for your machines. And you will be part of changing the game in your organizations. Thank you. Nosotros, viva la vida.